Yeah, so uh, we're still in the uh, introduction uh, topics, but uh, from our previous uh, meetings, we already discussed. We already discussed about um, hydrology for infrastructure planning and hydrological cycle. Um, for today's uh, meeting, we will still discuss uh, about hydrological cycle and watershed boundaries, and we will also learn about uh, water balance. And for the next topic, the meteorology and climatology, uh, it will uh, it will be teach uh, for the next uh, meetings in Thursday, but I'm afraid I cannot do the uh, Zoom meeting for the next Thursdays because I have um, some appointment uh, outside the campus. So uh, I will record it uh, in advance uh, and upload it in YouTube. So you still can learn about meteorology and climatology uh, at the exact time for hydrology class, which is like uh, 13.30. So, um, I hope it's all uh, okay for you. And let me start with a uh, hydrological cycle for today. Um, because we have we had holiday on Thursday, I'm afraid you uh, already forgot about this uh, water cycle. So I decided to uh, review it again. Um, <clears throat> Oh, okay, so the material I already uploaded in the classroom, so in my ETS classroom, so you can check them out. Uh, actually, I will upload it uh, every um, uh, after the class, so you can uh, you you already can download the first one from last week, and for today I will upload it after the class. So the water cycle, uh, as you uh, already know uh, from our previous class, um, uh, it shows us the cycle of the water. So uh, how the water is uh, moving from one side to the other side, how the water turns into a other form, but it's still from the water. Uh, from the ocean, it uh, it evaporates uh, into the clouds um, uh, by the condensation, and there is also evapotranspiration because of the plants. So evaporation and transpiration become evapotranspiration, and the clouds are going uh, in the atmosphere from one part of the world to the other part of the world. Uh, here in this case, it's from the warm side to the colder side. And um, it causes rain uh, and it prefers uh, And from this precipitation, we have uh, water running uh, from the upper side of the earth to the down side of the earth. And we also have uh, snow in other uh, in other side, uh, which is side uh, which is colder. So the precipitation is not only rainfall, but it's also cause uh, ice and snow. And by the increasing of temperature, there is snow melt runoff. And from the snow melt runoff, the water is running to the stream flow. Uh, some of them are running into uh, the ground by infiltration and it causes uh, groundwater flow, uh, which is also can come out, uh, out of the ground uh, from the seepage of the ground and going to the spring, uh, which, is, uh, which is can also be evaporated into the air because of the sun. 
and uh, from the spring uh, there is groundwater flow also going into the ocean so the water from the ocean uh, are going uh, again uh, up uh, into the atmosphere because of the evaporation and the cycle is continuous going and going um, as long as there is water in the earth the water cycle is keep uh, going on uh, so this is the details uh, as you already uh, seen before in the previous uh, in our previous meeting last week um, which one is uh, evaporation which one is transpiration I will uh, review it again here uh, the first one evaporation is from the uh, sea or ocean going up into the atmosphere because of the uh, sun the hot of the sun the heat of the sun and there is transpiration it's uh, because of the heat of the sun uh, causes uh, the plant or here is the tree the tree uh, to transpirate or doing transpiration and there is also um, evapotranspiration which processes uh, one plus two evaporation plus transpiration and it causes uh, forming of the clouds and the cloud is going into uh, causing rainfall and uh, there is precipitation not only rainfall but also hail and snow and after that uh, the water from the precipitation um, com coming into the soil uh, through infiltration and there is also some of part of the water um, going uh, above the soil uh, through overland flow and from the infiltration the water is going inside the soil through uh, interflow. Uh, there is also surface runoff here is the overland flow plus interflow uh, which is we can see uh, above the soil. There is also the water we cannot see inside the soil. Uh, it is called uh, moisture content, which is which cause the soil to be moisture. And there is also percolation, the water from uh, inside the soil going into the uh, groundwater. Uh, which one is uh, groundwater flow? going into the groundwater flow and the water from the groundwater flow is coming back to the uh, small river here or the big ocean here. Yeah, so that's all about the hydrological cycle. I hope you can uh, understand it and you, uh, you have to um, yeah, you don't have to memorize this, but you have to understand which one is which one is this, which one is that. So yeah, you uh, can understand about hydrology uh, more uh, easy. Yeah, and this one is uh, about uh, watershed boundaries. Uh, we already uh, talked about this also in the previous uh, meeting. This watershed boundaries. Um, Actually, there will be um, exercise about this. Uh, what I heard from the other uh, lecture, um, the exercise will be next week, I guess, or yeah, next week around Tuesday or Thursday. Uh, I still uh, haven't known the details, but uh, it probably will be next week. So in the exercise, usually you will get the, um, the counter map. So the, con the, the map with this uh, um, picture of the river, but not, uh, not this simple. It will be, um, ah, there's no, uh, it will be more complicated. Uh, so in one picture, there will be more than just one river. And from that picture, you have to um, draw the watershed boundaries, like uh, this uh, outer line here. So uh, 
to draw that line, you have to understand which one is the highest contour, which one is the lowest contour, which one is higher, which one is lower. So you can uh, decide uh, if the water is going uh, is uh, going uh, above this ground. Um, where are the water will be cool, which in which uh, direction to the right or to the left. And uh, if the water is going to different directions, so that one, that one is uh, will be the um, watershed boundaries. So here we have one main river, which um, one, two, three, four, four tributaries area. And from this one main river, there will be one uh, watershed boundaries. Um, from that, you have to uh, also uh, decided which one is the outlet. So the outlet is the one with the lowest um, lowest contour or lowest elevation. So the water is going from the tributaries area to the main river, going uh, to the uh, outlet. So the destination is the outlet. Usually after they uh, reach the outlet, here is the, um, the big sea or the bigger River or the bigger lakes uh, usually is the uh, the water boundaries uh, the water area with uh, the water with bigger area than this river. So um, after the uh, outlet is decided, here you can draw the watershed boundaries by looking at the counter. Like from here, we we have a river here. And here we have the uh, counter. Uh, from this counter, we can see uh, which one is the highest, which one is the lowest. Usually the lowest is the river one. So from the highest one, uh, the water is going into the lower uh, elevation. So when the highest one is uh, decreasing here, the water is going to the other uh, direction. So uh, we can we can decide it that this one is the point of the watershed boundaries, and this one is the point of also watershed boundaries. So this one uh, from here to here is one uh, watershed or one catchment area or one drainage area because it, uh, the water is going into the uh, same river here. Uh, for example, here we have uh, Bromo. Uh, if you ever visited Bromo, you can see there are a lot of um, smaller mountains around Bromo. So Bromo is the, uh, the big one. There are also a lot of smaller mountains. One of the small mountains called Mount Batok. This Mount Batok is, um, can be defined. Uh, it's watershed boundary, so we can see if there is uh, there is rainfall going here in uh, in the promo, uh, especially above the Mount Pato, where will the water go? And uh, here we have the the map from above. Um, you can access it. Uh, actually, in Google Earth, uh, we can also see this one. Like we can see uh, the the Batok mountain here and the Bromo mountain here and uh, the bigger one. Here we can see uh, if there is um, rainfall here uh, happening, the water actually will be go in different direction, right? If the water, uh, uh, the, what, the rainfall is, um, is going above the Mount Patok, the, the water will be go in different direction. From here, we get, we, the water can go there, the water can go also in the right direction, left direction, uh, and other direction, because it has um, the, highest, um, the, the highest point, like the highest elevation. Uh, and here we can uh, determine the watershed boundaries also, like if the water, if the Batok Mount, uh, if the water, if the Batok Mount is cut in 
uh, in the center, we can see that uh, um, the form will be like uh, this picture. And if the rainfall is happening above the Mount Bato, uh, we can see that there will be two um, watershed because the highest point of the mountain uh, will be the boundaries. So the highest point of the mountain will be the boundaries. From here, the water will be going left to this uh, lowest, lowest river. And uh, from here, it will be going right to this lowest river. But not all will be uh, going into the river because some of them um, will be infiltrated into the soil. And who knows, uh, the water who is uh, going uh, inside the soil will be go will be going to the uh, this one uh, river, this right river. Uh, probably it will also um, reach the other river. Who knows? So uh, it's not on. It's not all. Um, all of not all the water in this uh, watershed will be going to this uh, river, but some of them will also be go to the other river through the uh, infiltration to the ground. And uh, regarding the water balance, so this one is uh, about the water balance. So Fan Cho, um, in his book, he already said that um, the differences between inflow and outflow um, can be seen through the change in storage. So here we have a storage in the picture here. So uh, the storage um, in the uh, in this earth, uh, there will be a lot of uh, kind of uh, water water catchment that can be storage. For example, a river, a lake, or a sea or ocean can be a storage. And the change in storage, uh, we can see it uh, through the change of um, water level. So um, from the change of water level, we can see the change of the volume of the storage, because usually the storage volume, uh, so the storage uh, area is the same. Usually the changing is uh, in the water level because the uh, the storage area will be uh, same in um, one period of time. So the change in the storage uh, can be seen through the change in the water level. So here we have inflow and outflow. Um, what's important is uh, if there is water coming or uh, going out from the storage, uh, you have to decide it uh, which one is the inflow, which one is the outflow. From here, we have the arrow with blue color and red color. Uh, the arrow with blue color um, is the inflow. Uh, as you can see, the water is coming into the story. And uh, uh, the one with red arrow is the um, outflow because the water is going out uh, from the storage. Like here we can see the SRO. SRO is the surface runoff. So the water coming um, the water coming from the rainfall uh, running through the ground going into the storage. So surface runoff uh, because uh, of its name the surface, you can see this water is flowing because it's in the surface of the ground. There's also the water we cannot see, uh, which is uh, groundwater flow, GWF. Uh, we cannot see uh, the groundwater flow because it flows uh, inside the ground, on underground. But the groundwater flow, it comes from the precipitation Rainfall, which is going in, going inside soil, 
uh, it flows through the groundwater flow, uh, going back to the uh, storage or to the ocean or to the river. And there's also P here is the precipitation. And there's also EP or here is uh, only E because we don't have plants here. If there's plants, there's transpiration. So the evaporation become evapotranspiration. Here we only have evaporation because we, are, we only have the water in the storage. There's no plant in the storage. So if the inflow is bigger than the outflow, the uh, change in storage is positive. So we can see the um, water level here is increasing because the change in storage is positive. Um, but if the inflow is lower than the outflow or smaller than the outflow, we will have the change in storage, uh, which is negative. So the chance of storage uh, negative change in storage uh, means that we have decreasing water level here in the storage. So uh, at first, uh, the blue one is here. Maybe after delta is negative, we have a little bit down here. And um, there's also differences between uh, here what's happening in the land and what's happening in the ocean. So in the land, we have uh, precipitation. And yeah, we also have precipitation in the ocean, but uh, the differences here is the evaporation and evapotranspiration. In the land, we have evapotranspiration, which is uh, caused by the water in the um, plants, transpiration and water which is not in the plants. For example, in the soil, the moisture content in the soil, which is con also consists water. Uh, if there is sun here, yeah, I forgot to charge the sun here. If there is sun here, the, um, the activity in the land uh, become evapotranspiration because, the, because of the evaporation and transpiration from the soil. Um, so the total of uh, precipitation will be the evapotranspiration plus the surface runoff plus the groundwater flow uh, or plus minus the change in storage. Uh, for the ocean, the evaporation will be the um, precipitation plus the surface runoff plus the groundwater flow plus minus the um, change in the storage. So it depends on uh, the location of the uh, water activity, but uh, the differences is uh, if there is uh, plants, which is in the land, the activity become uh, evapotranspiration, but if there's no plants, the activity become the uh, evaporation. This is the example of the calculation of water balance in a uh, reservoir. Uh, here we have um, an example of a uh, watershed. Here we have a very big watershed of 100 kilometers square. And uh, there is surface runoff here going on. And there is this small part of 10 kilometers square, which is inundation area. So the flow area is the uh, water uh, watershed area or catchment area, but the inundation area is the area with the um, surface water, like here. We have uh, a reservoir here, inundation area here. Uh, is the representation of uh, this one. So here we have the area of 10 kilometers square, which is we can uh, calculate the water balance in this area, in this reservoir, uh, caused by the water activity going in this uh, catchment area or watershed. Here we have precipitation and evaporation. 
and there is also change in the storage delta s and there is also outflow from this uh, reservoir yeah this uh, this outflow is important because um, sometimes if the rainfall is too big and the evaporation is not that uh, great so uh, the reservoir can be too full to um, to uh, contain this uh, water from the precipitation that's why the outflow here is needed the outlet here is needed uh, so that the reservoir is not flooded because of the, uh, the great amount of the precipitation. So this example here, yeah, so there are uh, data for calculating the change of storage. Here we have the flow area of 100 kilometers square an Indonesian area of 10 kilometers square. The rain falls in an Indonesian area. So the amount of the rain is 20 millimeter per atmal. Here per atmal means uh, per in, one, in one day or in 24 hours. So here is uh, the height the height of the rain in one day, uh, around 20 millimeters. Uh, here we can see um, if there is data of the rain uh, of 20 millimeters. You can also estimate uh, how many uh, volume of the rainfall uh, is going on in this area by uh, knowing the uh, the amount of the area. For example, here we have 20 millimeter of rain in one day. And here we have the area of 10 kilometers square. You can multiply this 10 kilometers square with 20 millimeter. Of course, with the same unit, you can change this into meter square or change this, change this uh, rain into uh, meter. And then you, you will have the volume the volume of the rainfall, if the rain uh, happened in uh, one day, non-stop, yeah? one day non-stop in this uh, 10 kilometers square of area. So yeah, you can estimate the volume of the water from the rainfall. And there's also net rainfalls in the basin, uh, 40 millimeter uh, per atmosphere. And um, there is also evaporation in Indonesian area is 10 uh, millimeter per atmosphere. So it's this one is the water going in, the rainfall. The evaporation is the water going out uh, in this uh, 10 kilometer square of area. There's also outflow from reservoir for irrigation, of course. And the outflow is uh, 10 meter cube uh, per second uh, in average during surface run flow. And the surface run flow time is uh, four days, uh, which is means that the water is flowing from the surface run off in four days going inside the reservoir. With this data, you can calculate the change of the storage with one atmosphere equals to 24 hours. Here, the first uh, step of doing this uh, example is you have to decide um, which one is the, on the inflow, which one is the outflow. First, uh, we decided the inflow. The inflow is the volume water in the flow area and the volume of the water in the inundation area. Uh, how can we know the volume of the water? By calculating the uh, rainfall. Here we have uh, rainfall in the basin and rainfall in Indonesian area. So we can, um, 
you can estimate that uh, oh maybe the rainfall is uh, different in this area so we we have here inundation area and catchment area maybe uh, the height of the rainfall is different because maybe in this bigger area the rain is heavier than in this small part of area so yes here we can calculate the inflow oops the volume water uh, in in the flow area the area of uh, 100 minus 10 of course because this 10 uh, is the inundation area we also calculate the volume water in the indonesian area the smaller part of area the 10 kilometer square area here we we just have which has the lower uh, rainfall than in the uh, bigger area and we have the total inflow of 3.8 uh, multiplied with 10 uh, power of six metric feet. Uh, here we have the inflow of 3.8 uh, million meter cubes. And after we calculate the inflow, we also calculate the outflow. Uh, here, uh, after we decide which one is the inflow, we can uh, decide also which one is the outflow, which is usually is the evaporation, evapotranspiration, and so on. But here, because of the reservoir has uh, the area which has to be irrigated. So usually um, irrigation, um, usually the water for irrigation is from the river, but from uh, the river is a little bit unstable the water so um, the reservoir is needed so if uh, even if there is um, dry season uh, even if even in the dry season the irrigation water is still there because um, sometimes there is also a river which has no water in dry season uh, which is only have water in wet season so we cannot have irrigation water from the from that river, that kind of river. Uh, that's why uh, for irrigation, um, the water from reservoir is better than the water from uh, direct uh, from the river. That's why we uh, also have outlet in this uh, reservoir uh, for the water going out from the reservoir to the irrigation channel so that it can irrigate the irrigation area. And the volume of the evaporation here, uh, we have 10 millimeter per atmol in four days. So because one atmol equals to one day or 24 hours, we multiply it with four days and we also multiply, multiply it with our inundation area, which is 10 kilometer square. Uh, besides evaporation, we have the volume of irrigation uh, as outflow of the reservoir. Here we have the volume of irrigation is 10 meter cube uh, per second. Uh, multiply with four days because we calculated for four days. Uh, multiply with 24 hours, multiply with 3,600 3, uh, seconds. And yes, we have the outflow volume. We have the total outflow volume, uh, 3.8, 3.856 uh, million meters cube. And from this, we also can calculate the change of the storage by um, by uh, calculating the outflow and inflow. Here we have uh, outflow which is bigger than our inflow, even if it even it's only like one oh no zero point zero fifty six million 
uh, meter cube. Uh, so we can see we can see that there is decreasing reservoir what volume. Uh, probably it is because of this uh, outflow for irrigation, right? Because of the rainfall is almost equal to the irrigation, but we also have evaporation. So yeah, we have decreasing reservoir water volume because uh, the change of the storage here is negative. So the water level is uh, decreasing. Uh, what if there is no change in storage? So the second, the second example here is uh, if there's no change in storage, which means um, the water level and the storage is uh, stable, the same in time duration of one year. Here, actually, this one is uh, possible to happen because usually the change in storage is uh, caused by the, um, uh, beside the, what, the weather condition, it is also can be caused by the uh, storage condition. Because usually the storage, um, um, receive water from the uh, river. And there's also sediment um, flowing from the river to the storage. And this sediment usually, um, uh, it's, it's not going anywhere. It stays in the storage, which is caused the storage become, um, the capacity of the storage, uh, is decreasing because of uh, amount of the sediment uh, inside the storage. So by the time uh, going, uh, for example, in 10 years or 20 years, 50 years, uh, by the time it's going, the storage will be um, have less capacity. That's why the maintenance is needed. So the maintenance in the storage usually um, they they throw out the sediment inside the, the inside the storage to the original uh, river, so going back uh, to the river, so that the capacity of the storage uh, go, coming back to the original capacity and the sediment is going uh, back to the uh, the original river. In here, the example, the time duration is only one year. So it is possible that there's no change in the storage because it's only one year. Um, the story is different if the time duration is 10 years or 20 years. Uh, in a longer period of time, um, the change in storage is, uh, must be happening because of uh, the sedimentation. So here uh, we have the area of our um, thousand hectare, and we have the surface inflow of 250 um, million meter cube. And we have precipitation, we have evaporation. And here we have also the discharge for a hydropower plant. HPP here is hydropower plant and irrigation, IRR here is irrigation. So uh, from the previous example, example one, we only have this chart for irrigation, but here we, on, we also use the storage for hydropower plant. Uh, as you know, hydropower plant is the, um, the plant which generate, which generate uh, electricity through the power of the water. That's why it named hydropower plant. Uh, actually, it's the not the best, but uh, it's a very good uh, renewable energy resource, uh, which um, which developed uh, in in this country for a long time. Um, even though the the usage of this hydropower plant is not as wide as uh, the coal or other um, energy plan, but this hydropower plan uh, is good for the earth because it 
doesn't cause um, a lot of pol pollution because it, it, it comes from water and it generates electricity. So it's better than uh, the other uh, source of energy such as coal or um, other not a renewable uh, energy source. And here we also have water loss uh, 20 uh, times uh, 20 million meter cube. Um, if we compare this water loss to our surface inflow, it's likely um, almost 10%, which is normal. So water loss, um, the water loss here is not the water with uh, like, um, uh, for example, uh, we don't know where this water going. No, it's not like that. We know where this water going. Uh, this water loss is inev inevitable because um, in the storage, uh, as you already know, uh, the storage is built uh, using soil or using other materials, uh, which is usually soil. And here we can also have water uh, going inside uh, through the soil. That's why uh, we call it water loss because um, the water is not in the storage, but it uh, infiltrates uh, into the soil or into uh, going into um, other area, um, which cause uh, almost 10% of uh, losses. So not all from this surface inflow is going into the storage because uh, sometimes it's going uh, into the other place also. Uh, from the data here, we can calculate the annual evaporation volume and the, um, the groundwater flow. Here we have uh, First, uh, we calculate the annual evaporation volume. The annual evaporation volume here, we already uh, cut the evaporation rate. So we can assume um, that the evaporation rate is uh, the same in all the storage area, um, around the storage area, which has the area of um, for T, yeah, for T, of uh, no, not for T, for 4,000 hectares. So we have the storage area of 4,000 hectares with the evaporation rate of 2.051 meter. We can have the annual, the annual evaporation volume of 82.04 um, million meter cube. And after we got the annual evaporation volume, we can calculate um, P is the current water flow. Okay, so we can calculate the current water flow here uh, because in the time duration of one year, we can assume that there is no change in storage, uh, which means the water level in the storage is the same uh, in one year. So uh, here we have the uh, delta S, change of storage, uh, near to zero, equal to zero. After that, uh, we can conclude that uh, our inflow is uh, the same with our outflow. So the water coming in is the same with the water coming out uh, from the storage because there's no change in storage. That's why uh, we can uh, characterize our data based on which one is inflow, which one is outflow. Here we have P, precipitation, as our inflow, of course. And here we have self surface, what is the size? Surface inflow as our inflow, and groundwater flow as our inflow. Um, if you, uh, as you are remember, the groundwater flow. The current water flow here uh, is coming from the precipitation, but uh, the precipitation here is not the same with the GWF here because 
the precipitation here is the precipitation which is uh, coming uh, right into the uh, storage above the storage but we have the groundwater um, flow here is the precipitation going uh, in going into the soil and from the soil uh, there is groundwater flow uh, going into the storage so the source is the same from the rain from the rainfall but the um, the area, the catchment area is different. And here uh, we have three types of inflow, precipitation, surface inflow, and groundwater flow. So the inflow from the rain, the inflow from the surface runoff, and the inflow from the groundwater. And we also have outflow. The outflow here, we can characterize the outflow uh, based on our data. Uh, there is uh, water loss, of course. The water which is lost is the outflow because it's coming, uh, uh, going out from the storage. Uh, we also have evaporation here as an outflow. And the discharge, discharge for the hydropower plant and the discharge for the irrigation. So the groundwater flow here um we can calculate it by um by uh, using this equation like inflow equal to outflow so from the groundwater flow we can calculate that groundwater flow is this evaporation uh plus uh discharge for hydropower plant plus discharge for the irrigation plus the water loss minus the uh, inflow uh, precipitation and surface inflow. But we uh, have to calculate the volume of the water for hydropower plant and irrigation plants because we only know the discharge. Uh, we haven't calculated the volume yet. Here we calculate the volume by multiplying the discharge with the time of uh, one year. Because, the, uh, because of the time duration here, in our case, is one year. We can multiply it with 3,600, 3, um, multiply with 24, multiply with 365. And here we have the uh, volume for uh, each hydropower plant and irrigation. And here we also have the volume of the precipitation, which is going above our um, storage area uh, in, yeah, uh, with the amount of rainfall of 1,800 1, meters, oh, sorry, millimeter, uh, and we converted it to a meter which is 1.8 meter uh, in this uh, area of 5,000 hectare. And we, we have the volume of the precipitation here. And after we got all of the volume of each inflow and outflow, we can calculate the groundwater flow. Here we have the groundwater flow of 100 and 74.24 um, million meter cube. Uh, this one is the groundwater, which is going into the storage. So from the ground, the water is going into the storage so that there is no uh, change in the storage because of the uh, water coming in is equal to the water coming out from the storage. Yeah, actually, uh, the material for today is only until the water balance. So uh, there is still one more material like regarding meteorology and climatology. I don't know if you uh, want to um, like uh, do this uh, in this uh, meeting or for 
or I will keep it for the next meeting. It's up to you. Um, or maybe there's a question from you regarding the water balance, especially, or uh, about hydrological cycle and water type boundaries are also welcome. Uh, is there any question? Or everything is clear or not? Uh, this is only the beginning, so this is only the introduction to the hydrology. So I hope um, you can understand it clearly because, yeah, because it's the, um, the basic of the uh, hydrology. So um, in the next uh, material, we will talk about meteorology and climatology. Uh, which probably I will keep it uh, for the next meeting. So for today, um, maybe if, uh, if there's question from you regarding the uh, material from last week and uh, from today, uh, please, uh, you can uh, ask it now. Or maybe there is like a request uh, maybe I um, explain it too fast, or there is something unclear about uh, some some explanation here. You can uh, also ask. On um, regarding the uh, exercise for watershed boundaries, yeah. This, um, for example, here, um, maybe I will take the example from uh, our previous uh, our previous material from last week. So from our um, previous material here, uh, yeah. So here we have, um, I think this is uh, similar to what will you have on your uh, exercise uh, in watershed boundaries. I'm still not sure about that because uh, the, the picture is still in uh, in process, but uh, usually uh, we will give you um, some picture of uh, watershed, which contains a lot of rivers. Like this one it is a little bit complicated, but uh, usually it's like that. So you can um, decide which one is the outlet which one is your uh, watershed. So here, um, the picture is uh, without this red uh, line, yeah? So the red line is the one that you draw, the one that you will draw. So if uh, you got this kind of uh, river, you have to see uh, which one is the outlet. So um, to which direction this River uh, will flow. So uh, if you see the purple, uh, the purple line of the river, uh, there is um, only one outlet here in the Sapingan, and from this one outlet, the river uh, has two um, two main river um, here to the right and to the left from this. Two main river, there are a lot of tributaries area. And by using this tributaries area, you have to decide which one is the uh, boundary. So the 
this uh, tributaries area is near to the other river also, which dif with different uh, color. Here you can see uh, the red one and the blue one is a uh, different river, which is uh, from different watershed. So you can um, decide it, uh, your water watershed by looking for uh, your river. Um, based on uh, the other river. So um, from this one point of outlet, you can draw like just uh, one uh, watershed because usually one watershed uh, is going to the uh, one, outlet, one outlet. So if the river going to the uh, different outlet is uh, from the different uh, watershed, uh, that's the key. So because this is the introduction, I guess the material is a little bit uh, not too difficult, right? It's uh, easy to understand because uh, there is only uh, like a simple, simple equation, like simple calculation. Uh, there is no, there is no complicated things about this uh, topic, I guess, for this introduction. The the complicated things will be in the next um, in the next section, which is like uh, more more hydrological engineering. Uh, this one is only the introduction, so I guess you can uh, understand it clearly. This is the basic. And if there's question, uh, please ask in the class, or uh, maybe if there is also question. Outside the class, you can also uh, ask ask me through uh, WhatsApp or through um, on the next class. Uh, maybe there is also a question about the previous class. It's also welcome. Okay, is there any question? Okay, if there's no question. Yeah, so for the meteorology and climatology, the material is not uh, too long also. So maybe um, I will make it in advance. So in the in Thursday, I will give the link of the video to you all so you can watch it. And maybe I will make like a little quiz about it so I can make sure that you are uh, all watch the video, not only the like, yeah, not only filling out the um, sentence list. Okay, I hope uh, it is understandable for you all. Uh, if there's no question, maybe I will end this class for today here. Um, for the next material, meteorology and climatology will be uh, teach in uh, Thursday, and I will I will give the info in classroom and also to the um, one is the uh, the student representatives Angelina, right? Yeah, I will I will give the info regarding the. Uh, next class to you. And uh, for the exercise, it will be on the next, no, not the next meeting, probably next week on Tuesday or Thursday. I'm not sure yet, but I will uh, keep the info to you all uh, soon. Okay, uh, so thank you for your attention, uh, for your participation in this class. And um, yeah, I think that's it for today. And have a nice day. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you.